Things have been going pretty well for Polish publisher CD Projekt recently. Since the release of The Witcher 3 almost two years ago, the company's stock price has rocketed from $4 to over $17. It's now one of the biggest companies in Poland and it's managed all of this financial success without shafting any of its consumer base. Well, oh, hang on, hang on, without, without shafting anyone? That's right, Mike, without shafting anyone. <laughs> CD Projekt's rapid rise should really be no surprise. The company is now worth more than $1.6 billion, making it one of the biggest companies in Poland and even bigger than industry greybeard Capcom. The company was valued at $1 billion just last summer. The huge growth in the company's value over the last couple of years coincides quite neatly with how they've grown to become one of gaming's best loved companies. CD Projekt was already something of a cult success after the release of The Witcher back in 2007 and The Witcher 2 in 2011 by the company's games development division CD Projekt Red. Then with the release of The Witcher 3 in May 2015, the Polish company instantly became an industry darling, having produced one of the great games of the last 10 years. But it's really been CD Projekt's pro-consumer philosophy throughout all of this that cemented them as an example to the rest of the industry. This company has really stood out from the AAA crowd in recent years for its determined pro-consumer stance. It's common practice in the games industry now to churn out uninspired sequels, put microtransactions in full price games, hold back review copies and strip out content from games to sell on as DLC. CD Projekt don't do any of this shit and they're flourishing. The Witcher 3's 10 out of 10 status aside, that's why this company gets so much love and it's remarkable that their attitude has reflected in genuine stock market success. How have they done this? How it have is, they done this? It guy? is quite amazing how they've managed to be popular and like financially successful. They've, they've not sacrificed any of their morals or any, any of their philosophies and they've made a lot of money. They treat everybody with respect, they don't do all this anti consumer bullshit but still they're, they're they're going from strength to strength the company's growing yeah. everything's rosy oh man they're, play, they're playing the long game is, is what it is that you know the, the fact that they don't do any of that anti-consumer stuff is they've got this reputation now they've got a, a great reputation what that gets them is goodwill and what that goodwill gets them is sales yeah. people buy the games because they believe in the company they trust them they've got a lot of goodwill in the community now and that's that's paying off and it's not just witcher 3 it's not just the witcher that's earned them this it's gog.com as well if you don't know about it it's this drm free website on pc so you can download games completely free of drm what that means is you can just play it no matter if your computer's offline no steam no de novo and nothing like that locking it down so that's very pro-consumer that's that's for the gamers and then they get a lot you know they get a lot of love for that i think it speaks a lot for cd Project Red and their strategy because the general consensus in the industry is that we'll milk people as much as possible mm. to get more money. That's how everyone else works. CD Project don't do that. What they do is they make it a really awesome game. They treat everybody with respect and as a result, they get great word of mouth, great c customer loyalty. They get people talking about them as a company, about their games. And I think there's a lot of value to having a great reputation. That's aside from having an extra product. It's like the reputation itself is valuable to them and it gets them extra sales. Something that is so valuable is that they've got this con confidence that is that is hard earned over a long period of time. They've got that, they've got that confidence and it's not hype confidence. It's it's not like people excited for the game and the way that the trailers look and the way that the stills and the screenshots look. They just know that CD Projekt is going to publish and CD Projekt Red. They, they know that it's going to be a good game because of past experience and the way they've been treated before. The net result of all this is that Cyberpunk, the next CD Projekt game, is going to sell crap loads. I think they could skimp on the market in a little bit and still be one of the biggest games of the year purely because of word of mouth, because of the reputation that you were talking about earlier. They've got this reputation now, and they've got that confidence, which like I said, isn't hype confidence, it's just hard earned consumer confidence and they can use it now. They've been playing the long game, they've been treating people with respect, they've not been milking us, and it's paying off now, it's, and it's reflected in the market value of their company. The antithesis of this, of course, is Activision Blizzard. This is the biggest games company, hell, the biggest entertainment company around. They have a market value of over $40 billion, and they sure as hell couldn't give a crap about pro-consumer philosophies like DRM-free gaming. Activision have been curling out Call of Duty every year since 2005 and the games 
have only been getting worse. Only now, after Infinite Warfare turned out to be the sales disappointment it was always going to be, are they talking about shaking up the franchise. They milk the Guitar Hero franchise to death with their market saturating release strategy. You could go as far back as Tony Hawk's Pro Skater to see how this company will spam its most successful games for short term gain, shitting all over their fans in the process. Konami are another example of how taking a dump on your fans can get you some real results. The Japanese firm is worth about $5.9 billion, almost four times bigger than CD Projekt, but about 5.9 billion times shittier. Where the f*** do you start with this company? Firstly, there's the abrupt and incredibly confusing cancellation of Silent Hills, which people were rabid for after that amazing PT demo. Then there's the mishandling of Metal Gear Solid 5 and the strange and unceremonious exit of probably their greatest asset, the living legend Hideo Kojima. Also, Konami's utter disrespect for its own property is nothing short of disgraceful, with some of the more revered video game franchises there are, like Silent Hill, Castlevania and Metal Gear Solid, all getting the pachinko machine treatment. Pepper in the fact that Konami is widely reported through numerous sources to be a horrible place to work, and you have yourself one god-awful company that couldn't give a crap about the industry, its consumers, or the medium of video games itself. And again, they're worth $5.9 billion. So CD Projekt are something of an anomaly when it comes to big video game companies in the fact that they don't simultaneously milk and crap on their customers. <laughs> Well remembered. <laughs> <laughs> it's just such a great line. That's basically how the games industry treats us these days. It's big fat cows that they're milking and shitting on at the same time. Now get that out of your heads. CD Projekt have been generous and consumer friendly while giving us fantastic massive games and DLC that are free of DRM at an affordable price with no bullshit attached. Let's hope it catches on, eh? Can you think of any other great examples of pro-consumer companies in the games industry right now? Let us know down in the comments below. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Hit subscribe if you're new around here. Check out some more of our content around about here. And we'll see you again in the next one. Until then, bye for now.